Hey again, it's your friend Matt, here to talk about, here to play some Sierra Online games, and uh, what I started doing was working my way through the Sierra Library. This is kind of an ambitious thing to do, but uh, I, I love adventure games. I love them. I, I grew up, I, my first games ever were, were Sierra games on IBM PC, and I've played a ton of them. Um, but uh, I thought it would be fun to just go through like the entire library of Sierra Adventure games, kind of like a uh, NES Works or a Crontendo or Atari Ar Archive, that sort of thing. And there may be some crossover with those. That would be pretty cool. And the, and the games we play anyway. I don't really know those guys personally, but they're very cool YouTube channels. Check them out. Anyway, uh, so last time we played Mystery House, and I played for Apple II. Uh, on an emulator. Uh, this is this is going to be mostly emulation stuff. Even when we get to the games I can actually buy, like the good old games, it's still going to be an emulator uh, running them. It would be kind of cool to get like a a period, like an Apple II, and actually play them on Apple II and somehow stream that. But that's that's ambitious. So let's just let's just start here. Get as far as we uh, you know as far as I go uh, with this. See how see how it goes, and then we'll. Uh, We'll talk about uh, doing on the real hardware. Um, so the next game up, is, so Mystery House was uh, quite an interesting experience. Go check out that episode. A relatively short game. I had to cheat a little bit to get through it. Um, the next one is A Wizard and the Princess, which uh, you can see was released in the same year, uh, just about three months later. And it was released in 1980 originally um, for Apple II. Uh, by at the time called online systems. Uh, at this point, they're still, as far as I know, they're still just making the stuff out of their house. Just Roberta and Ken Williams. Uh, Roberta doing a lot of the artwork and and writing and, and that kind of you know all the creative stuff and and Ken probably pitching in and doing the programming that that kind of thing as well. This was also released for Apple II, and um, yeah, it was released later. You can see down here, eighty two and then 84, and um, it was actually, in 82, they renamed it to Adventure in Serenia. Not really sure why they renamed it. But yes, plastic bags, five and a quarter inch floppy, and instruction sheet. Uh, and it looks like it was called The Wizard and the Princess. But uh, here's the sort of cover right here. This is about a high resolution, as you're going to find on Wikipedia for this one. This is uh, another uh, game very much like... Um, Mystery House, but it is in color, uh, I believe. Uh, we'll we'll see. I th I think uh, yes. So uh, it was it was released later, and there was some uh, I think some remakes or something of this, as well as the re-release. Uh, this is kind of you know if if Mystery House was the precursor to the Laura Bow series like Colonel's Bequest and the Dagger of Amon Ra, Wizard and the Princess is kind of the proto King's Quest um, game. So already we're kind of into like two uh, Sierra franchises. Uh, now the Laura Bow is not one of the top Sierra franchises. You probably don't remember those. If you played Sierra games, you probably do remember King's Quest. This is probably, uh, this is like a proto King's Quest. So here we go. Uh, we're going to try this one. And I just, I got a list of all the Sierra games from Wikipedia, threw them into an Excel spreadsheet just to start to do some advanced scouting. So the next one is Mission Asteroid, also an adventure game. But then Sierra branches out the next year into more arcade-style games. Um, so they're actually starting to make a real business of it at this point in, in 81. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip those. I'm not really into those. I want to just stick to the adventure games. Uh, if we get that far, there's a game here called Soft Porn Adventure. And this, as you might imagine, is, the, is sort of the proto Leisure Suit Larry game. So um, I've done a little scouting on that one because I was kind of worried like it might be some adult content, but it's really kind of like a PG-13 sort of thing, and there's obviously no graphics. So uh, I think we'll, I'll probably try that one with a, with a strong content warning in the game. So that's coming up. But today we're going to do Wizard and the Princess. If you want us to do Mystery House, uh, you can check out the Twitch channel. Also on YouTube, you can see down there at the bottom of the screen bit.ly slash groves tube. I put all my uh, videos out there. So let's get on with it. Wizard and the Princess, Apple II. So this is the emulator like I had last time. Uh, I did I did have an Apple IIe uh, growing up, I'd say, maybe in my early teens. 
my dad picked one up at a flea market. We used to do a lot of flea markets, and he'd just pick up all kinds of gadgets and stuff that looked like fun. Apple IIe was kind of over at that point. It was definitely a Macintosh world. And so I was, I was kind of late to the Apple II, um, but I did have one. I, I think it was an Apple IIe with, with two disk drives. And uh, I don't, I didn't, we didn't have much software for it. It was just kind of just something to tinker with. That was my first exposure ever to an Apple device, was that Apple IIe in the house. Uh, we were, generally speaking, very much a... Uh, Apple was not really part of uh, our computer experience. Uh, it, was, it was all IBM, IBM clones, and uh, some uh, TRS-80 and stuff like that. All right, so let's go on with it. Let's boot her up. Now, one thing you might notice there right away is with the Apple, there is a, a floppy disk drive, and it takes some time for that to load. Uh, so the title screen just was a quick flash. You didn't really get a chance to read it. Maybe if you can go back and pause it, you might get a peek at it. Um, but uh, it, it's already different from Mystery Mystery House in that there's not an instructions uh, set up. There's no, we just right into the game. So it's just, they're kind of assuming that if you're playing this game, you're probably already played in Mystery House. And so you kind of understand how it works. Um, and, or, and or maybe they put all those instructions in the paper that shipped with them. So. Here we are, the village of Serenia. Around you is a desert. Enter command. So it looks like it's a small like desert village. And you can see some cactuses there on the horizon, some really large cactuses. And we're on some sort of very straight street. So let's uh, look around here. Nothing special. OK, so can we look at a building? Oh, it beeped me. There's nothing in the buildings that would interest you. You're in the village of Serenia. Around you is a desert. So it's... What did it beep for? It's like it locked up. Oh, okay. All right. So um, once again, I'm probably going to break out the old notebook and uh, start to make kind of a map here. So still have my map in here last time from Mystery House. Get that in there. I started making a map of the forest, but that was uh, that was a folly to try to do that. Here we go. This pen. So let's just I don't know. We'll start here. One was Serenia, and uh, I guess we can go. Let's go south. Uh, okay, and so we're down here, and we're in the south, and we're in the desert. <laughs> and it says we're lost in the desert, so it might be game over. Please leave the cactus alone. There's a scorpion behind the rock. Oh, okay. Not getting better. I went from lost in the desert to lost in the desert and too close to a scorpion. Look, a scorpion. Uh, nothing special. How would we get the scorpion? I don't see it here. Okay. Uh, kill. Maybe I typed it wrong. Kill scorpion. Scorpion behind the rock has stung you. You are now dead. Would you like to play again? Yep. Nice quick death there in the desert. So let's not go south. Let's go north. But it's going to be desert up there too, right? Oh, Graham, a snake. That snake is poisonous. All right, so looks like a snake. Nothing special. Can we talk to the snake? No way. <laughs> uh, how about get the snake? I wouldn't try it if I were you. Uh, how about look at the rock? Nothing special. Uh, all right, let's go east. So I'm going to draw a little picture of a snake on here. Okay, and we went east and this desert. So I'm already seeing a lot of King's Quest V in this game. <laughs> uh, south. Desert. 
So if this makes sense, then if we go west, we'll be back in Serenia. We're not. So we're just lost in the desert. Uh, north? I can't go in that direction. Oh, so... This map is already... I'm already messed up this map. If we go east... And then... Look at all this color. North... And west. This should be the snake. Nope. Okay. South. Lost in the desert. So, <laughs> this game is off to a really bad start. It is, it is kind of shocking to me. And, you know, it's easy to say with hindsight, but it is shocking to me how unfriendly these games are just right out of the box. I'm going to restart, uh, quit, uh, die, end, uh, restore game, switch to the adventure save game disc, enter the letter on which you saved your game. Okay, I don't have that. So it looks like it's going to just blow up. It's fine. Restart it. So I tried going north, I tried going south, I just see desert. And it says nothing in the villi villages, but can I go into a door? Which direction? Go west door. Go door west. Open door. No way. Can we go up? I can't go in that direction. Can I go down? I uh, can't go west. Can we go east? This is... Ridiculous. Uh, all right. Do I have anything in my inventory? Oh, look at that. I got stuff. Water, pocket knife, loaf of bread, blanket. Okay. Uh, what if I type help? No way. So, the problem here is that I don't really know what I'm supposed to be doing. And there's desert all around me. And <laughs> very frustrating. So, we're going to... Uh, yo, this game is giving me PTSD. Hey, thanks for stopping in, Stime, Stime Stream, S Time Stream. Have you played this one before? If so, maybe you could drop a little hint... Uh, in the in the in the uh, chat room there, um, or is it just that you've been uh, you've been in the desert, lost in the desert before, for real? Okay, so I've got the walkthrough open up here, and it's already. I mean, nope. This is Monica's tear. Monica's tear. I don't know what that means. Um. So, wow. All right, so the, the walkthrough is telling me to go south. So I'm going to start over my note here. Uh, this was Serenia. And we go south to the desert. And I know from experience that there's a scorpion behind that rock, but it says here to go south again. So... I tried to make a map, but the map didn't really make any sense. So I kind of gave up on that. But, uh, you know, if I'm just exploring a bunch of desert, I can do that as long as it makes sense in a grid sort of fashion. Now it says to go east. More desert. And then south. Okay, and then east. More desert, and then south. Okay, 
It doesn't look like anything particularly different about this screen, but it says uh, to get the rocks. Let's look at the rock. You see nothing special. Let's get the rock. I have a rock. Okay. Got the rock. I don't know why I couldn't get the other rocks. All right, so basically now uh, it's uh, north, west, north, and then north is a snake. North. If this is fall following a grid, I know where I am. West. North, so I'm still on the map that I made. North, and then I go north again. And there should be a snake here, okay. Uh, not making any sense. But okay, there's a the snake. So I can I kill this snake by throwing a rock at it. Okay, great. I killed a snake. So far, we're... We're... Off to a roaring start. Lost in the desert. Wandering around. Killing a snake. PETA. <laughs> Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know, uh, if Pete is too worried about me killing a snake, drawing of a snake from 1980. Okay, uh, so this, this is really just, uh, I'm not enjoying this game at all, all right? This is not, uh, <laughs> if I, if it were me in 1980 and I was playing this game, I would be like, I, I never want to play a Sierra game ever. These are, these are terrible. Uh, all right, so now it says walkthrough. Nothing in the game indicates this. You know, maybe there's an instruction manual or something. Maybe maybe I should look at the instruction manual before I do anything else. Wizard and the Princess. Instruction manual. Because maybe I'm missing something. You can't blame your poor decisions on dehydration. I see that root beer-esque beverage. <laughs> I do have a flask of water uh, in my inventory. Uh, <laughs> I don't, uh, it, it looks vaguely like root beer, I suppose. All right, so I'm trying to see if there's a manual online somewhere. Okay, here's the manual. So that's the cover art we saw before. This must be the wizard. This must be the princess. I don't see either of them yet. Maybe I'm one of them. I don't know. All I know is I'm in a desert. Traveling instructions, okay. This is probably a good idea to, to have read this first. Executing High Res Adventure 2. So Wizard and Princess is, is High Res Adventure 2. They, they went back or they started naming them or numbering them at this point. I simply boot the disc. When booting the adventure disc, there must not be a cartridge in either of the cartridge slots. So this might be the, this is the Atari uh, PC uh, manual, not the Apple II manual. We can ignore that though. Moving from place to place. In this game, you are in complete control, and the computer is merely your puppet as you give it instructions which might aid in your in your quest. The computer has a tremendous vocabulary, although it only understands sentences of one or two words. In most cases, this is a verb and a noun, such as climb tree or cross bridge. In many cases, one word suffices, such as up, north, left, or west. At times, a direction isn't sufficient to let the computer know where you wish to go. At these times, try moving towards something such as go tree or go cave, etc. During your journey, you will encounter terrain that may call for flying, jumping, climbing, etc. It'll lead with flying. In all cases, do not become frustrated. Oh, okay, well, now I feel so much better. Instead, think of a way to explain to the computer what it is that you desire, and it will do its best to comply. Okay, the world around you. As you travel, you may encounter objects which might serve you on your journey to save the princess. Okay, so I guess I need to save the princess. But am I the wizard? I don't know. You may direct the computer to get or take these items. I'm guessing the wizard is the bad guy. For example, a bow might be useful in battling dwarves. Uh, sure. Uh, who knows? Uh, many strange beasts have been sighted around Serenia. Okay. Objects may have magic side effects. Some may even have been left by the evil wizard. Yep, there you go. 
to delay your approach to find what you're carrying in any time type inventory. I did that already. A few hints. The wizard and the princess, notice the capital A in and, and the the, and the wizard here, is not a game that will be solved at one sitting. Okay, well, we'll see about that. Even slight progress may take weeks, depending on your creativity, mood, and experience as an adventurer. That's what the mystery house also said it might take weeks, and we did it in about an hour and a half with a little cheating. Involve the rest of your family. Make sure, I'm sure that family loves to see me wander around the desert and kill snakes. Make sure you try to go every direction from every place you visit. A wise adventurer would keep a map. I was trying to do that, and the map didn't make any sense. Uh, of the uh, places he has visited. Interesting, because Roberta Williams, I'm sure, wrote this. Why wouldn't she say? Uh, so um, I must be playing a he, some sort. Uh, and so should you. At times, the sands in the desert can cause one to lose his sense of direction and wander aimlessly forever. Yes, I have experienced that. This is not so if one is careful to note even slight changes in the terrain around you and note them on your map. Do not be afraid to experiment. The evil wizard is heartless, but has kept his spells inside the computer thus far. Mm. You cannot hurt or otherwise blow up the program by trying new things. See, that's a weird sentence, but... I mean, in 1980, that might have been an actual concern of some people. So I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to uh, uh, throw shade on that one too much. The graphics. Each place you visit as you travel will be displayed on the television or monitor of your Atari 400, 800 in color. Below the picture will be a brief description of where you are. At times, if you ask the computer for a closer look at some portion of the picture, such as a knot on a tree. It will comply with a close-up if it thinks there's something that might help you. You will notice that if you drop things, they will appear as part of the picture as they would if you drop them while walking. The Atari only provides for four lines of text on the display. I know that's not true. Um, if a message to be output is longer than this, you will hear a beep, and the computer will hold up additional output until you press return. Have I experienced that already? If you wish to review your dialogue with the computer, you may press return without typing anything. Thereby, I think that's how you spell thereby, causing it to display the last 24 lines of your conversation. To resume play, simply press return again. Saving your adventure. Uh, Gaze or save on a diskette other than with the gold label. Choose a new display diskette. So that's, that's kind of, uh, that might be a pain. Uh, do not use the standard Atari disk operating system. It will blindly clobber any data you have. Okay. Mm. <clears throat> If your disc fails within 90 days of purchase, return it to the dealer from who you bought it. Oh, interesting. So, but this is the Atari remake, so they might have actually involve dealers at that point. Uh, finally, if all else fails, you're totally stuck and about to burn the adventure diskette. Check with your favorite store for a hint or call us during reasonable West Coast hours. And here is their address again. That same address from, from Mystery House, but a phone number this time. Uh, I'm guessing that phone number doesn't actually reach them anymore. Interesting. Adventure occupies both sides of the disc. Side B is not copy protected. We are, okay. This is the actual story. Oh my goodness. Okay. You are a happy wanderer passing through a village in the land of Serenia. When you notice a large crowd, I didn't see any crowd. Being a curious wanderer, you saunter over to see what is going on. From the middle of the chaos, you hear a bell ringing. As you get closer, you see the town cry with a proclamation from the King of Serenia. Hear ye, hear ye, he cries. His Majesty, King George, has just suffered a terrible loss. His fair daughter, the Princess Priscilla, has been abducted by the great and dreadful wizard Harlan to his castle beyond the great mountains. This is very much King's Quest. The crowd is now hushed, waiting to hear more. The town crier then shouts. That here ye wasn't pronounced British enough. Shall I try it again? Hear ye, hear ye. Is that is that better? <laughs> hear ye, hear ye. I don't know. Uh, the town crier then shouts. Wouldn't it? Shouldn't it be the town crier then cries? His Majesty. I don't know what that face is. His Majesty offers half his kingdom to anybody. Half his kingdom. To anybody who can bring the princess back safely. That is all he has to say. But it leaves you shaking. 
Not only are you a happy wanderer, but you love an adventure as well. And half a kingdom is a great reward. It seems a little excessive, but all right. You decide to find her, but where are the great mountains? As you look around, you see no mountains, just a vast desert that seems never to end. Well, how did you get there in the first place, you happy wanderer? You ask a villager where the great mountains are located, and he points to the north and tells you there are a great many dangers on the way to the great mountains, and the wizard Harlan is very powerful and bad. <laughs> He's just bad. You thank the villager for his information and start off to the north. As you enter the desert, you check your belongings. I already did this. You are carrying a flask of water, a small knife, a loaf of bread, and a blanket. Not much for such a long journey, but it would have to do, for you have no money, and so you're on your way. Dot, 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 dot. All right. <sighs> snake. Killed the snake. Don't know why, but I killed the snake. All right, so let's go uh, north. Towards the mountains, right? Okay, so we're in the desert, and I'm hot and thirsty. So I should drink. Drink water. That is much better. Now your flask is empty. You're in the desert. I feel like if I was playing this game without a walkthrough, I would be, it would just be desert screen after desert screen until I eventually figure out a map and it would be just tedious. <laughs> um, okay, so let's just go east. And what do we got here? Oh, some sort of stick. I get that stick. Okay, I go. Uh, let's see. So go west. So back the way we came. And go west. So, following my map, this is where Serenia would be. Uh, so, I feel like maybe I can't go back to Serenia. It's just replaced by a desert square. Uh, there's a cactus with a hole in it. Uh, is that a cactus? Look, hole. There's a cracker here. Uh, <laughs> the old cactus cracker. All right, got the old cracker. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, uh, north. Oh, that it's animate. Did I, did, I, did I hallucinate that? Was that a mirage? Oh, uh, desert. Um, okay, look, snake. His tail seems to be caught under a rock. Is this a, what's that, um, mouse in the line situation kind of thing? Uh, I will get the rock. Oh, when you remove the rock from the snake's tail, the snake looks at you and says, I am the king of the snakes. <laughs> and I am the king of the snakes. And to repay you, I will give you a... So I tried talking to a snake earlier and it said no way. But now there's a talking snake. I will give you a magic word, hiss. <laughs> okay, I'm let me write down the magic word here. Magic word from the king of snakes. Hiss. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I can't, I can't even. I mean, just... I, 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 I don't even know what to say about this. Uh, I talked to the old king of the snakes. He told me his magic word was hiss. Yeah, all right, happy wanderer. All right, so the east. The desert. 
Uh, south. Oh, another snake. Um, this calls one rattle. What? Uh, 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 use like I can uh, look snake. Ah, there's a rattlesnake here. You had better watch out. You're in the desert. Okay. Uh, uh, you can use the stick. You hit the snake on the head with the stick and drive it away. I got a really complicated relationship with snakes in this game. Like, I killed one, just threw a rock at it, and then I saved the king of the snakes. And then I bonk a other snake on the head with a stick. So far, I mean, this game's called The Wizard and the Princess. It, basically, the more correct name at this point is Happy Wanderer and Snakes. <laughs> All right. Uh, there's the old hole there, so let's look in the hole. There's a note. Of course there's a note in there. Not, I would expect another cracker. Get note. Read note. There's some strange writing on the note. Okay. Drop note. Uh, that's what the walkthrough says. It says get note, read note, drop note. Get note. Let's get note again. It didn't actually show up on the screen. Read note. Read note. Okay. There's nothing really to do there. All right. North. So my map is kind of messed up now. I'm wrapping it around here. Uh, let's go north. Okay, and then north again. There is a locket here. Okay, let's uh, get the old locket. Okay, look at the locket. Locket is closed. Okay, open locket. Okay. Uh, look at the locket. Okay. It says Lucy. Okay. Locket says Lucy. Okay, the old Lucy locket. All right, so uh, let's let's go west. West. Feels like I should be running out of water here again. Oh, there's another note with strange markings on it. Get note. Read note. Strange markings. Okay. I mean, all right. West. And then north. What we got here? Looks like some sort of canyon. You are at the south edge of a deep chasm. There is a cottage and some woods on the other side. Uh, finally, away, getting away from the desert, maybe. Uh, oh my goodness! So I have this walkthrough on the on the my other monitor, and. I'm seeing the next instruction I'm supposed to do. And and it, it's completely like how would I how would I know this? How would I, how was I supposed to know this? Hocus. You typed in hocus and the bridge appears. Wow. Okay. I mean so maybe I'm being too strong of a critic here because these are, you know, Ken and Roberta, they are very much amateurs at this point. They're doing this just for fun. They're probably doing this to kind of entertain themselves. Maybe like saying hocus was like something they talked about. Like, oh, I don't, I, you know, everyone knows the magic words are hocus pocus, right? 
And everyone knows when you get to the chasm, you'd say magic words to make a bridge appear or something. Uh, maybe that's from a, a, a fairy tale or something. I don't know. But that is infuriating. I will say, however, this, I mean, this, this map I've drawn so far, you can't really see here, uh, is much, much larger than the Mystery House uh, game. So a lot of it's just desert at this point, but it is a much, much larger game. All right, so let's go north across the old chasm. Okay. And this is like the, uh, the I don't know, house. Okay, and uh, we're going to go, go door. There's an apple here, huh? Okay. Ah, you are in the one room cottage. It is almost empty except for a couple of tables. All right. Uh, ah, look, apple. The apple looks delicious. There's an apple here. You are in the one room cottage. It is almost empty except for a couple of tables. Should I get the apple? I guess so. I'm going to have to flip the page here again. And I'm going to label that one Z. So I feel like I should, I'm going north. So I'm going to start the bottom of my page here. Uh, so should I look at the tables? Nothing special, just a beep. All right, go door. Uh, look, a tree. There's a bridge spanning the chasm. Is that, so is that where I came from? Uh, so if I go west. Uh, I'm just going to do this here. West. Got all of this right here. Okay, and then I will say this Z to uh, I don't know. What's what's west? I can't go in that direction. Uh, what? And into the house west. Oh, okay. Oh, all right, all right. So it is north. It is north. But so it's like a different chasm. Uh, I'm very confused here. Because uh, I don't know. Z. Z. Okay. So I'm gonna go north. There is a little gnome here. So I kind of want to save this game before I talk to this, before I do anything with this gnome, because this walkthrough says something bad will happen if I talk to the gnome. Uh, but I want to see, I want to see that happen. So I'm gonna just mess around here a little bit. I may end up having to start over, but uh, uh, I'm you know I'm probably gonna need to learn how to use this thing eventually, this emulator eventually. It's called Apple Wind. Um, it's on GitHub, and uh, I don't know how to compile it, um, but I would like. Is there any documentation on it? You think in the old wiki? Lots of emulation documentation. So like Apple win save game disk. Like, uh, oh, you know what I can do? I don't need to save to disk. I can do a save state. Uh, okay, I need to bring this up. So Apple win save state. Now, I don't want to abuse save states too much. Um, Apple win. But I think in this case, with Mystery House, I was able to save game and restore. It was no big deal. Um, but here you need like a separate disk, and that's going to be that's going to be complicated. How do I oh, docs? Uh, hmm. Apple went on GitHub. Apple went. 
Apple win, like save state. Documentation is not really. Is there like a Google group? Save state. Well, I don't know. Let's see. What do we got here? Mm -hmm. Oh, here's a little help, help file. That's what I can do. Let's see. Disk and disk images. Search for save state. Save state files. The complete Apple IIe state can be saved to PC file at any time. This can be useful for continuity across Apple and sessions. So to help with games that don't have a save option. Kind of what we're in here. Not really. Okay. Uh, follow up just the file. Other details. So it's saved to a YAML file. Interesting. All controlled by the Apple Win configuration tab labeled advanced. Hmm. Uh, okay. F11, F12. Saving and loading a save state file. F11 and F12. So if I hit F11. Okay. Now I'm kind of curious. Um, it's a YAML file. Which means it's human readable. So what's in there? <laughs> Is it... It's... Okay. Well, that's pretty cool. Uh, look at that. You can even see kind of the memory map over here in this, in this larger view. Very interesting. So it's just straight up a uh, hex map of the main memory uh, plus registers and uh, other stuff going on. Very interesting. But it's interesting it's stored in YAML. So if I wanted to, I could... You know, I probably do this other formats too, but it's very easy for anybody to go in here and mess with the memory. Huh, very cool. All right, that's a nice feature of Apple Wim. All right, so I got the state, the state saved. So this gnome looking guy, he is uh, not much of a looker, but let's uh, talk, talk gnome. The little gnome grabs some of your things and runs away with them. Okay, well, that was uh, anticlimactic, I guess. Okay. All right, so uh, we're going to go for the gnome. We're going to go east. I mean, this is an improved graphics over Mystery House, so I got to give them that. They're definitely getting the graphics better. Uh, and I think the gameplay is a little, is a, maybe a little better so far. But the story, uh, well, and the game, the gameplay is a little better. The game mechanics are still not good, and the story is pretty, like, threadbare, um, which is unlike later Sierra games. So we're in a forest now instead of a desert, but it may as well be a desert. Just as boring. Forest. Oh, there's a hole there. Look, hole. Hole's large enough for you to fit through. <clears throat> okay, uh, go hole. Oh my. This is, this is, uh, this is definitely going off my, uh, um, walk through here. Uh, we're going to go north. I'll maybe come back to this. I'm going to make a note. Okay, so this is a hill. Uh, there is a bank with a small crevice in it. Okay. Uh, look, crevice. See anything special? Okay. Uh, and... Um, so again, I'm kind of confused. You couldn't fit through a small crevice here in the woods. There's a bank with a small crevice in it. So again, the walkthrough is giving this away. I just type hiss. You suddenly turn into a snake. You're in the woods. There's a bank with a small crevice in it. 
So maybe I should have tried his earlier. That, that uh, you know, I'll give him that. Maybe I should have tried it earlier, figured out what his does. Uh, I was thinking of some sort of password. That was where my mind went. Go crevice. So I'm in the crevice now. And uh, you're in an underground tunnel. There is a small crevice going to the outside here. Sunlight is coming in through the crevice. So I'm going to just make a little note of this. Sunlight is coming through the crevice. All right. Is that the, those lines? It's just supposed to be some, like rays of sunlight? Okay. Um, so we're in the... Uh, in the in the hill hill crevice okay I'm gonna go south um, uh, you are in an underground tunnel there is just enough sunlight coming through the crevice to see Going south again. Still more tunnel. You have changed back into yourself again. Okay. You are in an underground tunnel. There is just enough sunlight coming in through the crevice to see. This is giving me a, a real colossal cave sort of thing. Surly Dev. Hey, how are you? Good morning. Yeah, it's uh, late evening over here. Well, yeah, I guess late evening. But good morning. Doing a little bit of uh, adventure gaming. 246 my that's uh that's a very early morning uh okay so um i went south twice we're gonna go south one more time and uh oh wow that's all this stuff you're in an underground tunnel there is just enough sunlight coming in through the crevice to see there is a little door here yeah very late night depending on the direction Got that right. I'm guessing for you it's a late night. Okay, uh, so there's all kinds of stuff here. But uh, didn't I have this stuff already? Empty flask, stick, pocket knife, pocket knife, note. Large rock, apple, blanket. I uh, so there's. There's a cracker, and there's a locket, and a loaf of bread. I don't remember getting a loaf of bread. Well, there is, okay. Get the cracker. <laughs> the cactus cracker. Uh, maybe, I don't know, it, I dropped it because I turned into a snake or something. And then there's this locket. Fine. And uh, get the bread. Why not? So is it the same locket? Let's look at it, because it said Lucy on it. Yeah. So much beeping. Okay, I don't know, I don't understand that, where those came from, why, uh, I, I, it's very confusing. Okay, but we're going to open the door, get on the floor, everybody walk the dinosaur. The door is locked from this side. Uh, okay, unlock door. But I didn't have. A, did I have a key? I don't remember having a key. Was that in my flask of water, small knife, loaf of bread, blanket? Yeah, I did. I already had a loaf of bread. So where did I get a key from? Oh, maybe it's. Oh, you know what? That other that tree that I went in. Maybe that was the other side, so it's locked from this side. Okay. Open door. Ah! Go door. Uh-huh. Okay, up. Yes, this is where I, this is where the hole was. Okay. So then this goes to the uh, forest hole. Okay, I'm gonna go hole. 
fine. So why did I go in there? Uh, uh, I don't know why I went in there. I, okay, whatever. I guess I learned how to turn into a snake. Okay, south. Wait, what? Huh? Up, go hole. Oh, okay. East. We're going to go east. And again, my, my map. What was that? Someone live on Periscope. Oh. Probably ever happens. All right, so I'm in another forest. And then north. And we're in the forest still. There's a parrot. Ah, the old forest parrot. Okay, let me look at that parrot. The parrot is very beautiful. Wow, really paints a picture in your mind's eye. You're in the woods. There's a parrot sitting in a tree. Well, I suppose I have a cracker <laughs> that I got from a cactus. The parrot eats the cracker and is very grateful. He sets a vial of liquid on the tree branch. How? Does he have thumbs? Does he have some sort of ability to grasp liquid? Okay, so there's a, oh, there's a vial. Okay, I'll get the vial. Uh, <laughs> yeah, where's a parrot get a vial from? I mean, I understand this is a magical, like, fairy tale sort of situation. But, <laughs> I mean, why a cracker? Why a parrot? Why does a parrot have a vial? Why, why couldn't that gnome have a vial? Oh, my goodness. Okay, let's check out this vial. The vial is full of a greenish liquid. Mm, the old green vial. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to go back south. This is back to the forest. And we'll go west. This should be back to the forest with the hole in the tree. Okay. Well, uh, I bet there are no aspirins in those woods because the paracetamol... Oh my goodness! You, I, I think you need to get some sleep there. Uh, so, <laughs> you, you, <laughs> parents eat meal. Yeah. So you're not surly enough. I think this is the problem. When you, when you're up this late, you lose surliness and you turn into corny joke dev. Whew. All right. So here we are. Um, is your database still logging chat? No, it's not. I don't. I don't turn it on for for this. Only for the only for the dev. <laughs> yeah, you, you dodged a bullet there. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, then why am I here? <laughs> I don't know why you're here. It's three o'clock in the morning in the in the UK, man, and you're here watching me play this terrible adventure game from 1980. This game that's that's just a few months younger than I am. <laughs> All right, where am I? Uh, hole, okay, forest hole. Uh, southwest, west. Uh, so, where was I? Shoot, I lost track of where I was. I was at the parrot. This, I'm just gonna mark this parrot right here. Parrot, okay. Uh, south, west, yeah. So I'm going to go west to another nondescript part of the forest. Okay. And then go north. And there should be a uh, something interesting here. Yes. A little river. Uh, a brook. Sure. I'm going to call it river on my map. Uh, so uh, let's see. I found an exercise book a few weeks ago with computer codes written on the front. It was all the cheat codes for games I played about 35 years ago. 35? Uh, your writing reminded me of that. Cheat codes for... Uh, cheat codes... Did they have cheat codes 35 years ago? Sorry. Oh, jeez. I'm just trying to think. Cheat codes for what? Uh, we've got to be talking... I, I'm guessing uh, like Apple style games like this, Apple II. 
uh, or you know something of that vintage. Spectrum, ah, of course. Yeah, that's right, you're in the UK, so of course it's Spectrum ZX. Jet Set Willy, Manic Miner, etc. Those are, I mean, those are all, Spectrum was never a thing over here. And uh, those those games, I mean, I, I sound vaguely familiar, but uh, yeah, not much Spectrum here. All right, so I've got water. I'm going to fill up my flask to get some water. Okay, which just makes sense. Uh, let's go back to the desert again. All right, so we're going to go north next. I used to make maps like this all the time for actual fun, good adventure games. Uh, tall tree. So I think I'm going to go up that tree. Uh, climb tree. Okay. Now we're in some sort of uh, canopy here. You're at the top of the tree, you see an ocean in the distance. I'm just going to call this one up to the top. Uh, down. Why did I go up there again? Okay. Uh, south. Just so I know where. <laughs> so this is the river. South, and this will be back to the regular forest. West. Okay, this was, this was the gnome before, but now it's the lion. You're at the edge of the woods, you see the ocean. What? It, I mean, they, the instruction manual says to map this game out, but this map doesn't make any darn sense. All right. So, uh, I don't know, uh, look at the lion. The lion won't let you pass. Okay, can I talk to the lion? I wouldn't try it if I were you. I mean, why not? I already talked to the snake. I talked to the king of the snakes. Why not talk to the king of the jungle? All right, so what it has to do is give the bread to the lion. Maybe the vial can blind the lion. No, the, the actual solution is give bread to lion. Because everyone knows lions love bread. Oh my goodness. I like the way you think though, Surly Dev. Uh, no, but but uh, knowing Sierra games, the vial, you know, you don't typically use an item right away. You, you use it like 10 screens away. All right, so I gave the bread to the lion. Great. Ah, so much beeping. North. There's a rope here. Uh, uh, I'm at the edge of the ocean. Beach is what they call that. Yes, on a beach. There is a rowboat here. There's a rope here. Yes, so they have bread. Bread is one of the items that I had to when I started the game in my inventory. I don't know why I have bread. I don't know why a lion likes bread. It doesn't make any sense. Almost nothing in this game has any sort of reasoning to it. I'm going to get that rope, though. Always use a rope in an adventure game. Uh, I, I guess I get in the old boat. Uh, go in boat. I don't know how to go a in. <laughs> go boat. There's a hole in the boat. Of course there is. There's a hole in the boat. Um, interboat. Yeah, interboat might have worked. So I got to fix this hole in the boat, I guess. Flask of water, stick, pocket knife, uh, note, a large rock, a locket, an apple, a full vial of green stuff, a rope, and a blanket. So let me ask you this, Surly Dev. Given that inventory... What do you think I should use to fix the hole? Stick in the hole, okay. Use stick in hole. No way. Use stick. No way. No, I'm, I'm afraid that's... Uh, oh, so you're half right there, silly dev. Blanket in the rock. No, it's use blanket. You stuff the blanket into the hole. Let's hope it works. 
Now keep in mind, this is not like a pond. This is not a lake. This is an ocean. I'm supposed to hope that a blanket and a rowboat <laughs> yeah, then row fast as I can in the ocean. Okay, so we're gonna go. We're gonna go north into the ocean here. Ocean, you're in the middle of the ocean. Wow, it's either a very small ocean or I was rowing very very fast. I'm gonna go north again. Ocean. You are hot and thirsty. I think you had better drink some water. You are in the middle of the ocean. Drink water. Yep, that is much better. Now your flask is empty. Okay, uh, we're going to go north again. So, I don't know if you ever played King's Quest V, but this the whole water and the, and the desert and stuff, King's Quest V just did the same sort of thing. Um where you have to drink water after walking a certain period of time through the desert. This is an obnoxious part of the game. I think uh, there's another adventure game I really love called uh, Legends of K Legend of Karandia that did the desert kind of puzzle thing, but it did it a whole lot more interesting way. Anyway, uh, yeah, some sort of green volcano. It's the green island. That's the island of the green stuff that the vial is from, I guess. All right. So, uh, now we're going to go east, I guess, towards the old island. Oh, I'm not getting any closer. Uh, east again. Our island's still there in sight. Uh, east, east, and we'll go east one more time. I'm so glad I have this walkthrough because... This would be... I would have given up on this game a long time ago. You're in a robot on the beach of an island. So there we go. I'm not on the ocean. This is uh, this is a beach. Okay. I will exit boat. Okay. There we go. So we're on a... Um, uh, beach on island. Zemcat, have you tried the Infocom games? Yeah, I played a lot of Zork when I was younger. Um, and uh, I played some of the later Zork games. And I, I think I played Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Leisure Suit Larry. So, Leisure Suit Larry, I believe when I was like seven years old, uh, a friend of my dad's had it uh, on his computer and I thought it looked amazing. Like, that's the game I want to play. This was my very first exposure to a Sierra game. However, uh, he wouldn't let me play Leisure Suit Larry uh, as a six-year-old, which was probably a good idea. Um, but, uh, yeah, you had to answer, yeah, the copy protection. <laughs> or or, the, or the, uh, the age lockout stuff. I eventually did play it later. And the first real Sierra game I played was King's Quest III. We're going we're gonna to get there. Uh, I think uh, if we keep going, this uh, it might be a while, but we'll get there eventually. I played a lot of King's Quest Three, but the Legion of Solaria was really the first game to get me into like point-and-click adventures, graphical adventures. Uh, Infocom, uh, yeah, I did a lot of text adventure like Colossal Cave and uh, Zork and Hitchhiker's Guide, and there may be another Infocom game I played. I can't remember, but uh, yeah, those were kind of the predecessors to to these games. And by the way, Zemcat, thanks for stopping in, saying hi. Uh, actually, Ken and Roberta, we, I think we maybe talked about this last episode. They played Colossal Cave, and they said, oh, we can make a game like this. And then one of them, I think it was Roberta, had the idea to let's put some pictures to go with it. And thus, Graphical Adventure Game was, was born. At least that's the way the story goes. All right, so we're on a uh, beach. We le I've left the boat. Uh, we're on an, an island. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, so let's, uh, I don't know, let's go east, I guess. There's an X right there. I actually want to go back and look at that X. Let's put down, uh, this is a, 
You're in the jungle of the island. A path goes north and a path goes west. Well, that's really helpful <laughs> to know which direction I can go in. Uh, north and west. So I'm going to go back west. I'm going to look at that X. It's not in my walkthrough, but I'm going to look at him. Look X. See, nothing special. So there's an X on an island, and it's nothing special. That just screams default text to me. I love the way the pictures draw and fill the colors in, just like the art packages of the day. Yeah, and we, I covered this in Mystery House, Surly Dev. Uh, it may be different for this game. Oh, dig under X. I don't have a shovel or anything. Maybe I should try it. Go back over there. But one of the actual cool innovations that they did with Mystery House was they had some sort of drawing device that would translate like you would draw on paper and that would translate it into computer graphics. And that's how they did the art for it. Uh, however, uh, when they did that for Mystery House, which was a relatively small game, we're talking you know, maybe a dozen rooms and a few items, it took up too much space on the disc. So one of the cool innovations they did was, was basically a kind of SVG graphic where uh, they take the drawing and convert it into uh, coordinates. So that's why, uh, I don't know about this game, but the Mystery House, it would draw. It would, it would draw the graphics based on math and not like a bitmap sort of thing, which allowed it to fit on one disc. And in this case, it might be doing a similar thing, uh, but it introduces a lot more color. Uh, and some and some dithering, uh, I think that's what they call it. So let's let's go dig the X. You have nothing to dig with, so uh, it seems such a logical thing to do. It, I mean, it does, but uh, you know that's one of the cool innovations that they did at the time was he had to create some software to take the input from that whatever that pen was called and translate it into into math. So um, yeah. All right, so east, and uh, so nothing here. I, the path goes north, so we're going to go north. And we're still in the jungle. Uh, path goes north, south, and west. I'm really coming up against the edge of my paper here. And we're going to go north again. Uh, and then convert the math back into a drawing. Right, yes, right, exactly. Uh, so uh, we're at a beach here. There's an anchor here. And, uh, okay. Uh, I can get, get the anchor, I guess. Just put it in my pocket. <laughs> Got an anchor. Uh, and, uh, all right, let's go, uh, we're gonna go west. Let's see if we can find a smoke monster over here. A beach on the island. Oh, you're in the jungle on the island. There's a tree house up in a large tree. A path goes east and south. So I'm going to say tree house. All right. Um, can, we, can we climb the tree? The tree may not be climbed without help. All right, so uh, can we throw the rope? You throw the rope, but it doesn't go far enough. Throw the rope doesn't go far enough. All right. Um, can we? So if I can, if I, <laughs> just trying to work this out logically. Uh, try not to peek at this walkthrough too much, but. Just it just doesn't make sense. We can use rope on anchor. Uh, uh, tie rope to anchor. To what? Uh, use anchor on rope. The anchor is tied to the rope. Okay. Now we're gonna throw the rope. The rope is thrown over the branch. Okay. Uh, seems like a pretty small anchor if I can just launch it up over a tree. All right, 
Uh, and now we're going to go climb up. Climb up. You're okay. You're in the treehouse. Look at that. Something I need to dig on the X. By the way, the point of this game is I'm trying to rescue a princess from a wizard to get half a kingdom. But for some reason, I'm on an island trying to dig up treasure. Really lost the plot here. All right, so we're going to get that shovel. And is that it? Anything else in here? Anything special? Okay. We'll go down. Okay, and uh, treehouse. Yeah, if I go south here, it'll take us back to the X. Uh, okay, I go south twice. Yeah, there's just jungle right in the middle. That adds up. It's my grid here. Okay. Uh, I guess dig X. You have uncovered a treasure chest. Of course I have. Okay, uh, open chest. A pirate jumps from behind a tree. Shiver me timbers. Trying to steal my treasure? He grabs a chest and runs. <laughs> Look, it, if you're... It. Why were you... Why? Why? Why are you here behind the tree? You buried your treasure. You should probably leave. Yeah, uh, don't just stand there and run after him. <laughs> I don't I don't need a treasure, though. He grabs a chest and runs. It doesn't say where direction he runs in. I I don't I don't really care about the treasure. Uh maybe, I don't know, maybe we'll come back to him. Uh east. Uh, that's the only way I can go as far as I can. Tell oh, north. What west? Why didn't I just go north in the first place? Why did I go east, north, and west? No. Oh. This game. Anything else in the hole? Uh, well, I don't know, cause now I'm lost. This is like a weird. It's just breaking a grid. It's like a cave. We're going to go in the cave. Why not? Okay. Uh, is this the same chest? Open chest. Look chest. Small harp. Ah, the old harp. That's it. Get harp. Well, you know I'm gonna try to play the harp. When you play the harp, it sings beautifully. You are in the cave. So, all I hear is a beep. Beep! <laughs> That's what the harp sounds like. Look room, okay, and then we're going to go, go cave, leave cave. Not a very melodic heart. No, well, I'm not a very good heart player, so, you know. We're going to go east and uh, back to this uh, little fork in the road, and we're going to go north, and this goes, should go back to the beach, right, where the anchor was. And again, this is something. This doesn't make any sense. This next step in the in the walkthrough is it makes no darn sense. You know, mystery house. At least it kind of made sense what you're supposed to do, except for the one part of the forest in the kitchen. That was ridiculous. Drink vial. When you drink the liquid, your arms turn into wings. Of course they do. It's the old green green stuff. Turns your Arms and wings. No, I did say in the in the uh, uh, instruction manual that uh, one of the verbs you might be using is flying. 
So it's kind of a hint, I guess. Uh, I, don't, I can't, I don't know. PMSL, what is PMSL? Is it okay to Google that? PMSL. Oh, okay. Uh, you are laughing. <laughs> Go down a few pages, please. What, what am I looking at here? Uh, you, want, you want the story? Is that what you're looking at? High-res adventure. Yes. So these these <laughs> these games were called high-res adventure. So the first one was called Mystery House. They went back and started numbering them. High-res adventure. One, two. And I think there's four total of them. I showed this uh, earlier. There were these. This is High Res Adventure 1. This is High Res Adventure 2. And Mission Asteroid, they actually called High Res Adventure 0. Because why not? Uh, yeah. Yeah, they are. So I, I kind of made this comment in the last episode. High Res, what does that mean? <laughs> because even, even at the time, even 1980, this isn't necessarily very high res right there are higher resolution displays in this now you may not be able to show a lot of colors in those in those high resolution displays it may be monochrome high resolution displays but i mean so high res to me is just like a like a marketing jargon you know it's like saying something is high definition these days it's like oh, oh anything can be high definition right all right so anyway we got uh I can fly now, so why not? Let's just go. Keep going north, because we know north is where the wizard is, right? Uh, you're on a beach. So oh, I flew to another island. I don't know. Let's mark down fly here on this map. This is a. This is becoming a pretty serious map here. We have to look on the internet to see if someone actually has drawn a map to see if anything makes logical sense. You have changed back at yourself again. There's a beautiful sapphire ring here. Foothills. Well, I guess I'll get that ring. Terrific. So that's a pretty good graphic right there. That's a that's a really good drawing. I, I guess I could see, like, in 1980, if I see the screenshot of this rolling hill, I see a tree, and I see, you know, I have this prompt where I could do anything that my imagination comes up with. That's pretty compelling. I gotta, I gotta admit. Nothing special about a ring. Just some random ring I found. All right, so let's go north. Uh, more foothills. Whoa. Uh, on the other hand, you have a drawing of a person like this. Not really great with faces uh, in these first two games. Uh, we're, uh, there's an old peasant woman here in the foothills. She doesn't look that old to me. Talk to the woman. Yes, I think I will. Talk woman. She warns you of the giant who lives in the mountains. You're in the mountains. There's an old peasant woman here. Be flirty. Mmm... We'll get to the soft porn adventure <laughs> game in a few episodes. Uh, I could be flirty. I don't know how to be something. <laughs> be flirty but charming. Uh, be flirty but charming. I don't know how to be something. <laughs> Why does it say something? That's interesting. All right. So I talked to a woman. She's got something on her head. Great. Okay. Uh, we're going to go west. There's a slight drizzle. Oh, look at that. We got like a, a, or like a rainbow sort of thing. Really showing off the colors. This screen here. Again, this part of the game, uh, graphically speaking, 1980, this is pretty compelling. This is, uh, this is probably a very novel thing to see this kind of graphics. Taste the rainbow. Taste rainbow. I don't know how to taste something. So it doesn't understand the, the taste as a verb, I guess. Uh, okay, uh, the, oh my goodness. All right, so the next thing we're supposed to do is we're supposed to go rainbow, as if it's something you can just walk, go, oh, yeah, we're gonna go to the end of the rainbow. Skittles probably weren't created then. I think Skittles have been around 
longer than this game. Uh, I could be wrong. Rainbow. There's a gold coin here. Well, we're going to get that coin. The sun came out. Okay. Nothing special about the coin. All right. We're going to go north. Okay. Uh, you are at the east edge of a deep gorge. Another another gorge. Another canyon. There. So I'll put gorge here. Uh, there's a rickety bridge crossing the gorge. I don't think it can hold much weight. So this makes me want to save the game. Gorge. AWS.yaml. It's storing uh, save games as uh, save states as YAML files, by the way, Surly Dev. I don't know if you're here for that. Um, I actually opened up one of these YAML files. This is very, this is a pretty cool thing. This might be worth exploring uh, as developers, but uh, it's not storing the memory as a binary. It's storing it as a YAML file, so you can see all the different register values here, uh, keyboard state. But here's the actual main memory. And if you notice the little map over here to the right, you can kind of see a little bit of a pattern in some of the data. Uh, pretty darn interesting. And if I wanted to to just sort of hack around with memory, I could literally just come in here and just start changing these hex values. Pretty interesting uh, choice to store save state in YAML. Uh, gives a lot of interesting possibilities to play around with this emulator. But, um, or, you know, we could even just hack the game, uh, probably, uh, by messing around with memory. But uh, I thought that was pretty cool. I've never seen a save state as a YAML file before, or JSON or XML for that matter. All right, so I saved the game because this bridge can't hold much weight. Now, uh, I guess I would say cross bridge, but you're too heavy, the bridge collapses, you are dead. Would you like to play again? See, that's what I mean. Uh, so I'm at the bridge. I just restored my game. Doesn't look very strong. The, the thing that says to do next is to say Lucy. Everything you're carrying disappears. You have nothing left. Now, why would I say Lucy? That's what, that's what the, uh, I, I made a note of this. That's what the locket says. Lucy. So I said Lucy and all my stuff disappears. So I have nothing, which makes me lighter, I guess. So I will cross bridge. I, why do I need a magic word? Why can't I just drop items? So weird. All right, so. Um, so cross the bridge. Uh, and now I'm at the west. Oh, this is, I went west, okay. Uh, west of the gorge. Uh, and then I go west again. I'm just crossing over pages here. And I'm in the mountains. And north. There's a cave here. We're coming up on about an hour and a half. But uh, based on the length of this walkthrough document, um, we're almost to the end. Makes you wonder what the game designers were smoking. <sighs> I mean, there's, there's, it's like two designers, husband and wife team. There's no QA. There's no market testing. There's no focus groups. They don't have professional writers, professional artists yet. So I understand to some extent that yeah, none of the, some of this stuff doesn't make sense. But, yeah, I, you know, at least some breadcrumbs about something we're supposed to do. That's why the old peasant woman looks so young. Well, I, I think that she was a husband's fantasy woman. No, I think the, the, the in this case, Roberta Williams, I think she did all the art uh, and all the, all the writing. 
uh, all the creative stuff, and I th and Ken did all the, a lot of the development, uh, if not all the development, like the actual programming. So, uh, <laughs> I don't know, fancy woman. She had a, a very much a stick figure face. Like Roberta hasn't gotten uh, the hang of of drawing faces yet. Uh, Mystery House was the same way with the faces. All right, uh, so let's go in the uh, let's go in the old cave. Whoa, uh, this is this is all my stuff. Um, get stick. Oh my goodness. What? Um, get all? You want to try? Oh, you want to try get all? Oh my goodness, get all works. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I exit cave. So Lucy made all my stuff go into the cave. Where did I find that locket? Was that was that in a cave? I mean, I guess that's kind of a hint. But not really. All right. Okay, we're going to go back south to the mountains. This is where the rainbow was, I think. Uh, no, 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 no. No, we're west of the west of the gorge. Uh, so we're gonna go. So we're gonna west. This is new territory. Oh boy. I'm gonna just say, what is this guy? There's an angry-looking giant here. This is a giant. Oh, okay. The peasant woman warned me about the giant. Right. He looks like he wants to dance, play the harp. All right, we'll play the harp. <laughs> the giant is a great lover of music. He thanks you for the harp and leaves with it. Wait, he took my harp? <laughs> What's up, giants? You take my harp? Okay. Man, what a piece of work. All right, uh, we're going to go north. Mountains still. And we're going to go north again. Uh, there's a peddler selling wares for one gold coin each. Don't argue with the giant. If the giant wants the harp, the giant gets the harp. Peddler. Uh, one gold coin each. Okay. Uh, let's, let's see what he's got. Look at... Um, wait, what did he say? Look peddler. Look stuff. Look at table. Oh, here we go. There are boots, a jug of wine, a dagger, a horn, and a frying pan on the table. Now this seems right out of King's Quest VI. Like, having played those later King's Quest games, I can really see the some of the major story beats from those later games in a much more primitive way in these games. Uh, all right, but uh, so we have a one in boots, boots, jug, dagger, horn, frying pan. We have one in five chance of getting the correct thing, right? I uh, assume we can come back and swap if we don't have the right thing. But what do you think is the uh, the right thing to get here? Uh, oh, you're cheating? Oh, me, me too. <laughs> We're gonna buy the horn. Uh, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna play the horn. Play horn. This is that's not a bad tune. <laughs> Just take my word for it. Okay. Uh, all right. So we're going to go north to uh, foothills. Oh, you can form a th do it with a thieving giant. <laughs> and we're going to go north again towards the castle. And. I tell you, this castle, again, very primitive graphics, but it looks a lot like the castle in King's Quest, or King's Quest One. Uh, there is a moat around the castle full of crocodiles. Of course, there is. 
Uh, so of course, what we're going to do is play the horn, because uh, that'll that will make the drawbridge come down. Why wouldn't it? <laughs> okay, north. So we're gonna. I'm just gonna draw a line over here to the entry hall. There are doorways to the north, west, and south behind you. All right, um, north. You're in a maze of passageways. Passageways go south and west. Twisty little passages all alike. All right, now this is a part of the game. And again, if this follows a grid, this would be just a, a matter of exploring and charting out the whole thing. It's gonna be a lot of screens that look like this. And I could see how that could be, um, you know, kind of a fun little time killer to just sort of explore a maze. But I'm going to, again, cheat. Uh, we're going to uh, go west. 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 North. And uh, if I remember, I'm going to try to bring up a east. I'll try to bring up an, someone who's actually drawn a map. On, on the internet, someone has that. East and then north. North. West. North. East. 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 This is skipping probably like hours. Okay, and so I'm just going to draw a bunch of squiggles here, and we've got uh, this door. You're in a small empty room. There's a passage behind you. Uh, open door. It is locked. Look door. You can probably just type north or east. Uh, e or, yeah, W. Yeah, I probably could. So, use knife. You picked the lock. So that, that was a similar solution to the uh, one of the puzzles in Mystery House. You had to use a butter knife as a screwdriver. So that's kind of a MacGyver influence there. But uh, I think if Bill Semp were in the channel, he would he would probably be uh, he would probably be uh, flipping out a little bit because you can't pick a lock with just a knife. <laughs> You could maybe destroy the lock, I guess. Or if it's, I guess maybe if it was like a real old timey lock, maybe. But what good is a lock if you can just stick a knife in it and, and unlock it? <laughs> anyway, uh, open door. And we're going to go door. Which direction? Okay, we're going to go east. All right. Uh, what is this here? You're in a short hallway. So let's go up the old stairs. Uh, you're in a tower. There are stairs leading down. Okay. Uh, short hallway. Why is this telling me to go up, down, up? Oh, weird. Uh, there are stairs leading down. Is it a bird? It looks like the Twitter logo. It is very beautiful. There's a bird here. You're in a tower. The stairs leading down. Fine. Uh, so it tells me to put on the ring. The ring is on your finger. There's a bird here. Okay. And then it says to rub the ring. The you turn into a cat, leap up and eat the bird. You are yourself again. It just doesn't make any darn sense. Completely baffling to me. Okay, we're going to go down, we're up and down, up and down. That didn't make sense. Then there's a bird. Why is a bird in the tower? And then we got to put on a ring and rub it. And for some reason that turns into a cat. And then for some reason, 
I'll jump up and eat the bird as the cat. Why did I do that? Again, just gratuitous animal killing in this game. Okay. Uh, go east. Uh, okay. And here's the frog. And there's a tiny room. I would have lost interest in this game after getting cracked from the cactus. Absolutely, Surly Dev. What, I mean, I lost interest in this game at the very beginning when it was all about getting lost in the desert. It was just ridiculous. Kiss the frog. Why would I kiss the frog? The frog becomes a princess. Isn't it the other way around? Isn't the prince the frog? And the princess kisses the... Whatever. I kiss the frog. The frog becomes a princess, so this must be Princess Priscilla. Look, princess. You see nothing special, so she's just your run-of-the-mill princess. <laughs> the bird, at least, was very beautiful. The princess is nothing special. What's that all about? And by the way, she's too tall to fit through these doorways. So now that I've turned her from a frog into a human, she can't get out of this tiny room. Take her. I, I, Zemcat, I don't know. <laughs> uh, she has no shoes on. Get her some nice shoes. All right, whatever. There's a princess following you. I went east. East. Princess following you. Ah, the old shag carpet room. Uh, there's a closet. Look, closet. The door is closed. Open door. Fine. Uh, look, closet. There's a pair of shoes here. Oh, it's a walk-in closet, apparently. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's a completely empty closet except for one pair of shoes. Nothing special. Well, nothing special shoes for nothing special princess. Get shoes. Princess following you. Look, shoes. Uh, whoosh she's no Imelda Marcos <laughs> that's a reference that uh, I'm sure all the kids understand <laughs> hmm why do my shoes say whoosh uh, do I wear the shoes okay and I'll say whoosh you are transported to Serenia. So here, I, here I was, this is back where I started. This is the little village in the middle of a desert. Uh, friends is following you in the desert. Okay. Congratulations. You have safely returned the princess to Serenia. For this outstanding feat, you have been declared a junior master adventurer. Green Valley Publishing thanks you for playing The Wizard and the Prince. So Green Valley, I think, published it for Atari. Or no, no, not for Atari, but they 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 must have published a remake or a re-release of this game because otherwise it would say online systems. Thanks for playing Princess and the Wizard and the Princess. So <laughs> I didn't see a single wizard. I did not see a wizard. In this game, there was no wizard. What's up with that? The wizard and the princess. This game is more like guy kills animals and there's a princess at the end and there's no wizard. <laughs> That's a more accurate title of this game. Oh my goodness. Well, I'm definitely... So Mystery House, I actually kind of enjoyed Mystery House a little bit. It was a short game. The bird was the wizard? How do you know the bird was the wizard? What? <laughs> okay, I don't... All right. I I'm willing to go with that. You don't know the bird was the wizard. Uh, makes as much sense as anything else in this game. Mystery House, I actually kind of enjoyed. Because there was some crazy things you could do in that game. And, you know, you actually kind of pieced together who the murderer was as the game went along. There were some dumb things in it, but this game is just like, it just ramps up the dumb. It takes all the worst parts of Mystery House and, and expands it. But, but, you got to think of the context at the time. This is a text adventure game, which, you know, there were a few at the time. 
This has color graphics. And some of these graphics are pretty good. Uh, you know, this is a very simple drawing here, right? But, you know, some of the, the rolling hills and uh, the castle and stuff like that was pretty good art for the time. So, I could see why this could be compelling, but only for the novelty of it, really. The, the actual story, the gameplay mechanics are just garbage. Um, and, I, you know... <laughs> Having played games later, I know that it gets better. But if this were me, having having played Mystery House and be like, okay, this has got potential. Wizard and the Princess, oh, this is this is not this is not good. The only thing to save this game is the graphics, really, if you ask me. All right, well, that's going to be it for uh, this episode here. We're, we're finishing at about an, an hour and forty, which took a little longer than Mystery House. But I would say if I was playing this game for real, it would take a lot more time. Hours and hours and hours. Lots of frustration. Lots of boredom. Um, I mean, half these things I would have never figured out without a hint. I just It would just never have happened. I would have been sitting at that ravine, being like, how do I get across this ravine? <laughs> and, and how would I know to say hocus? So... Yeah, this is unfortunate. Uh, this game is not so good. But uh, next up, next time I get some, a chance to uh, play, um, uh, I will be playing Mission Asteroid, which is uh, high-res adventure number zero, I believe. Uh, there was a C64 remake of this game, and I put that as a note because I thought, well, you know... We'll play the really simple Apple version, and then maybe the C64 will be a little, maybe a little better art, or um, you know, more to the game. After playing this, though, I am not interested in checking out the remake, so I'm going to say no on that. Uh, I can't wait for the next 14 of these. <laughs> and why is that? Uh, is there a game you want to see in particular? What what is the favor? What favor would you like me to do? Surly Dev. I'm waiting with bated breath. If I come in this late again while you're playing one of these games, remind me of this night and send me to bed. <laughs> hey, I said earlier on, you should go to bed. I said that. Because uh, I knew this game from the very beginning. I was just, this is not good. This is not going to be good. So they're going to get better. I don't know if Mission Asteroid is going to be better. But I promise you, by the time we get to like this one right here, King's Quest, it's going to be good. It's going to, yeah, well, it's going to be a lot better. A lot more compelling than this. Uh, okay. So anyway, that's it for tonight. Thanks, everyone, for joining me. Thanks, Surly Dev, for staying up late, playing this awful game. Uh, yeah, don't bother watching the VOD of this game. Yeah, skip the VOD of this game. Uh, it's not going to be any better. <laughs> the only thing good about the VOD is you can skip <laughs> You can skip to the end. Uh, anyway, uh, who else? Zemcat, thanks for joining. Uh, thanks for uh, stopping in. Also, uh, S-Timestream? Or Stimestream? Thanks for uh, stopping in. And uh, good night, everybody.